Hello, hello, teachers of English, teaching classes 11 and 12 at CBSC schools. This is Ruchi Sanger, and I'm going to showcase some reading passages, a possibility where you can sort of engage with them and use them in your classes. Now, we know that the reading passages for classes 11 and 12 have two types, the question one type and the question two type. The question one type would have the descriptive literary and factual pieces, wherein descriptive, obviously, as the name suggests describes it's not discursive it's descriptive the literary is from either fiction non-fiction any piece and excerpt uh, the factual uh, we, we don't have poetry uh, factual is going to be something pretty much expository in nature it is just going to be giving information as such okay so uh, with that let's proceed to what I have to show you mm. The first uh, a type of uh, passage that I've uploaded on the website www.ruchisenga.in is uh, basically descriptive in nature, but it's uh, supposed to be testing comprehension, interpretation, inference, and vocabulary. Remember, this is what has been mandated by the CBSC. So if you come across material that does not cater to these competencies, you would know that that is not something that you need to showcase in the classroom. Let the children use any material they want, but when you put something across to your learners, it has to be absolutely uh, as close to being accurate as possible uh, or that you can manage to create yourselves. Uh, so the passage that I have put up is uh, thematically linked to Liburnum Top. It does not mean that it talks about goldfinches. It's, it's just that it's a thematic link just to um, uh, ensure that the type of um, uh, age appropriacy or themes of familiarity for the student uh, exists, right? It's healthy. It's always good to use your reader books to, to um, sort of, you know, choose the kind of themes that you want to project in front of your students. Uh, please make sure that just taking something uh, from a newspaper or a magazine um, or, or a website, etc., cetera, is, um, it, it's not put across to the students as a passage as is. Please make sure that you give it a finishing touches, that you sort of create it for academic usage, you check for things that uh, can be edited out and stuff like that, right? So let me show you the kind of uh, questions that come from here. It's a descriptive passage. Questions here would cater to these competencies. I'm showing you two. There are 10 questions. Obviously, each one would have a different kind of competency. And um, remember that even vocabulary is um, inference based. It's not like a direct pick. OK, let's move on to the second type uh, for class 11. It's a case based factual passage. It says that verbal or visual inputs, statistical data charts, verbal or visual inputs. It could even be verbal inputs. So it's not always important that you put in your charts or data, et cetera. Both types of questions being asked. Look at the competencies. Now, in a case-based passage, obviously, the competencies will move to more analytical. So you have inference analysis, evaluation, along with interpretation. Comprehension has been knocked out of here. So in class 11, you have eight um, the question's not 10 because you obviously also have the note making uh, uh, section. So for class 11 in reading, you have three, not just two. Uh, case based is a new entrant in class 11 this year. Uh, the passage that I have uploaded is a case based passage, uh, father to son. This is what I've uploaded. That's a thematic link. So there is going to be a case or a survey or a study or some kind of research uh, that is going to be developed in that passage. Obviously it's just about 200, 250 words. It's not much, but it has eight questions. So to show you a sample of a question like that, this is a part of the passage. I've not shown you the questions because uh, this is being put up on social media. I don't want them plagiarized by random people. I know as teachers, uh, this doesn't stand a chance, but it's on YouTube, so anything can happen. 
So uh, this is the passage for class 11. Remember, anything that you use for class 11 can be used for 12 as well. You might just have to add it uh, to two more questions and that I think is child's play for you. Uh, moving on to class 12, for the first type, you know the, uh, the, the competencies now. They are comprehension, interpretation, inference, specifically mentioned that inference-based vocabulary exists. It's not just going to be pick a word that means the same as. That doesn't happen anymore. The passage that I have uploaded is thematically linked to the last lesson. It's a literary piece. For class 11, I had taken a descriptive piece, but anything that you use in 11 can be used in 12 for practice or using in your periodic test or using in uh, your um, term-based paper. Please feel free. So this is the last lesson is thematically linked. Let me show you a couple of questions from here. Look at the look at the competencies of these questions. They are not just a pick and drop retrieve kind of uh, segment. So there is much more that has been done here. The answer key obviously is available. Let's look at the case base for class 12. As you would see, the competencies are interpretation, inference, analysis, evaluation. Like this, this is higher order. It's a case-based factual passage. A case-based passage does not necessarily mean that you just pick something from somewhere and attach some uh, uh, topically related data to it. No, it needs to literally have a case. There has to be a problem that is being addressed. The purpose of the case, what do the studies reveal? What is the result? What has been the hypothesis? What, what, all that, you know, it's, it's a case. So you need to ensure that you create it. If you cannot create it, please, you're more than welcome to use what is created here. Uh, be very, very careful when you take it um, from uh, random places over the internet. Make sure that the questions have these competencies addressed. Usually materials that I see just simply have a uh, direct retrieving kind of questions. Let not, let's not expose our children to something like that. I mean, if, uh, if the board uh, mandates this, these competencies, then we might as well rise up to the task, right? So the um, a passage that I've uploaded at www.ochisenga.in is linked to the roadside stand. Roadside stand, as you know, has been included this year. So I thought that it's going to be a good idea to, it doesn't mean that, uh, uh, you'll have to wait till you teach the poem. No, it's just thematically linked. Just to give you assurance as a teacher that yes, it is age appropriate. It stems or it is rooted in the mandated syllabus and such. So the kind of... Uh, uh, question uh, questions over there are going to span all these competencies listed on top. I'm just going to show you a little piece of the passage and not the questions for this one. Uh, you know, so this is uh, what it is. So as you can see, it's definitely case based. You know, and and I've I've sort of retyped the data into a table format. I mean, why is it always a graph that cannot be read? It is blurred. So recreated it so that it's easily, uh, you know, uh, the child is able to read it easily. Hmm? Another another advantage of thematically linking is that the child um, sort of is interested. And even if it is thematically linked, you know, there's some interesting concepts that have been taken in these passages. They, are they, they, they would have a tendency to hook the child, not bore the child. And an interested child is always engaged better with reading. The comprehension is better, right? So please make use of these. Again, I'm repeating, I'll be giving you the, uh, you know, links in the description box. Please go, please access, see if it suits your fancy, procure them, engage with them, use them in the class. You can remove the watermark. They are downloadable. They have answer keys. Take bits and pieces, take it all. It's up to you, right? It's just that you'll have to be very careful about publishing them in a public space, on social sites, social media sites. But that's not allowed. It's for your use in your classroom, in your paper, anything. But it should not be published in assignment booklets. It should not be published on websites. It should not be published on uh, other platforms. See, the thing is, 
Uh, I've been a teacher myself. We are very strongly networked. We have our own WhatsApp groups. Uh, we have updates, uh, update groups, you know, whatever goes on the uh, website. People who are added to that group sort of, you know, uh, get those regular updates. It's only for updates. The other ones for discussion is from across the country, we have teachers. So if things that are on the website surface somewhere else, we immediately get to know because teachers themselves inform. Okay. Uh, I know for a fact that teachers would not do something like this. They are ethically very, very sound. I mean, we have to be, don't we? But still, it's a um, uh, part policy to showcase something like this. So do visit the website. There are a lot of resources. I'll be, I've already uploaded some chapter connected uh, uh, questions. So we've done it on uh, indigo we've done it on deep water on rat trap uh, in the in the next uh, video i'll be showcasing those and i'll be posting the links so feel free to visit see you thank you stay safe stay empowered